Hello fellow coders out there and welcome to another AMC Creations tutorial. Now, the tutorial that I made on how to make a dodgeball game really blew up. It I, I was not expecting for this to happen and you can check it out by clicking the little eye over here. But since we got 1k views, um, over 1k views, I'm going to be making a part 2 for this. And if this part 2 gets over 1k views, I'm going to be turning this into a series. But in this tutorial, we're going to be continuing the dodgeball game that we've been making, adding some extra features. Uh, today, we're going to be making uh, a better looking score, a better looking lives, and some other stuff, stuff as well. So let's get started! Alright, now you've seen the score and lives variable. And actually, before doing anything, I'm going to rename this lives. Now, you can use score and lives variable, and while they're uh, informative and educational, they're not, they really don't look very good. So, there's this white area, and then there's this orange area, and I don't want that. I want the score to be written in plain text. So, what we need to do is we need to make a new sprite, and we need to rename this one. Make sure it's renamed one, or else you might get... Um, or else you might get something weird and we're going to make the numbers one through nine and then zero at the end so i'm going to speed this up and i'm going to come back to you when i'm somewhere near finished and the numbers are supposed to be on uh separate costumes all of them Okay, so I'm done with the numbers 1 through 9, and the number that I'm going to add is 0. And we're going to rename this costume 0. Now you need to add this code, and it might be a bit tricky, but if you stick with me, you'll get it. Then, actually, before I do that, I'm going to go to the backdrops, and I'm going to say score. I'm going to write the name score right there. I'm going to get rid of this. And yeah, and I'm going to rename the score counter. Boom, and I'll hide this. So what we want is we want this number to print over here and you want to show the score, but we just don't want it to show the score once and then stop. We want it to show the score for however long the score is. Now, not if that makes, I don't know if that makes so much sense, it probably doesn't, but if you stick with me, you're gonna get it. First thing I'm gonna do is make a block or a function as we call it in syntax languages. We're gonna call we're gonna call it right. Then we're gonna call it value at x y and then spacing s size z. So it should be right value at x y spacing s size z. And all of the inputs that I used were number or text inputs. And we'll run with that screen refresh for this block. Cool. Now, uh, we're going to go to this extension and add a pen extension because we're going to be using the stamp block a lot. And we're going to say erase all at first because we don't want any pen marks. Then we're going to say show. Then set size to the si to Z, the size input. Then we're going to say go to X y then we're going to make a new variable called counter and i'm going to set counter to one and then we're going to repeat the length of this is a block that we don't use that often but we're going to repeat the length of value then we're going to switch costume to the letter counter of something or a value then we're going to say stamp and then change x by spacing or s the space because the spacing inputs the letter s then change counter by one and after that we're going to hide cool now what we can do is we can say when go clicked forever and then we're going to get this my block that we made pretty cool then we're going to say right we can plot the score variable right in there this is why there are number of text inputs and this is why we 
name the costumes accordingly, like one, two, three, instead of costume one, costume two, because if we name them costume one, costume two, it would be really hard. I mean, we could do it, but it just, it could, it could be really hard. So position the, the score where you'd want it to be. Brilliant. In fact, I'll make it be a little bit higher. That looks pretty good. And we're going to put these x coordinates right there. Negative 167 and 163. Cool. Then I want the spacing as 20. Yeah. Then I'll have the size as 100 because that looks good. Then I'll hide this. And I'll show this temporarily just to, just to tell you that it works. There's an ice cream. I don't think I'll be able to get though. Oh, I wasn't able to get it. Oh, there you have it, an ice cream. And as you can see, the score increases and so does the label. And the score course and the label corresponds to the score. Um, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make a new one. I'm going to be duplicating this and then duplicating this there. And this is going to be for the lives. And first of all, I wanna get rid of the outline on that. I'm going to group these because that that avoids me having the confusion to just select all. I can just select here and boom. Then I can duplicate this. And I think the lives are three. If they're not, then I'll have to change it to five, but this works too. Okay, then I'm gonna draw a little box around them. Vector lives. Okay, cool. Cool. And those are when the three lives are still there. Now I'm going to shrink that. And I'm going to rename this to three. I'm going to duplicate that. It's already named two. And I'll get rid of one of them. And I'll rename that to one. Get rid of one of them. And we'll rename that to zero and get rid of that. Then this is super important. Just like the numbers, you have to make sure that the lives are in ascending order with zero at the end. If it's not, then it's going to look kind of fun funny. Then uh, I've talked about this before, but you could just do one go click forever. Switch costume to the lives. And I can put the lives up here. Perfect. So, if I lose a life, it works perfectly. However, the game over is just static. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't move. It doesn't uh, interact with your audience. But, however, we don't want that. So, what we're going to do is we're going to say... Um, we're going to get this game over to like move up and down, but we have to be careful here because instead of saying stop all, which would stop the entire program, we're saying the game over should just hover up and down when nothing else should work. And that's not the same as saying stop all. Stop all means everything can stop, including this. So what we're going to say is we're going to be making a new variable called game ID. And I've done this in the fishing game part three tutorial, which you can check up here, but um, you just make a variable called game ID. Then what you need to say is you need to say if game ID equals um, if game ID equals two, because that's going to be the main game screen. Actually, in the stage, we need to say when go clicked. Temporarily, we're gonna put this set game ID to two. Later, we're gonna add a start screen, but that's out of the scope of this of this video for now. Then we're going to say, um, let's see if that works first of all. Perfect, it works. Then we can say when go clicked forever if. Game ID equals two show L side. Cool. Now we're going to say this if game ID equals two. And what we're saying is we're doing all the code only when the game ID is two. And we're also going to say 
we're gonna get an and over here. We could also wrap an if inside this, but I like putting an and. Then we're going to say and game ID equals two. Instead of broadcasting game over, we're gonna say set game ID to three. Oh, not E, three. So cool. Then for the score counter, we're gonna say if game ID equals two uh, and then we're gonna say if not game id equals two then we're going to we're not going to erase all which which was what you might think we're actually gonna write blank and that's uh, that's effectively gonna make it be make it write nothing there so yeah and then we're going to be putting we're gonna be copying this code right in there for some reason, it doesn't copy. I think I know why. Yeah, when whenever you're trying to copy something to the edge sprite, it's good to always make a new sprite because this com sometimes gets in the way and gets cumbersome. Then we're going to say, if game ID equals 2, do that. Cool. However, the, the game the game over screen doesn't show when we... When we um, Oh, when the game is over. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy that code, but instead of saying all this code, we're going to say, instead of saying game ID equals 2, we're going to say game ID equals 3, do that. And set Y to, then we're going to get a plus, and we're going to say 50, or whatever the Y position you want it to be, times 10, then the sign... Oh, sorry, the cosine, because y is cosine. No, I think y is sine. Eh, whatever, I'll just say sine. Then the timer, which is what makes it float, times 200. Cool. Now let's see if it works. And some clones still show. And that is because... Because, ah, we need to say when I start as a clone forever, if the game ID equals two, we want to get rid of all the clones. We don't want any of the clones to show, uh, oh, if the game ID equals three, we want all the clones to delete. So let's see if this works. I can pick that up for all the basketballs. Oh, there, there it is. It's one right there. And... Good, we can die now. Excellent. So, boom. However, I want to get something to restart. And right now we can't do that. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this go up. And I'm going to say press R to restart. R to restart. Cool. And... I'm actually going to... Here, I'm actually going to leave it like that. So, and, actually, I'm going to get rid of this, and I, I got rid of that score label. I don't want to join just score. I want to, I just want to, I don't want to write just score. I want to write join score, colon space, score. Oh, wow. It's not going to work, is it? Because I don't have any letters. I gotta undo that. Oh, and I got to create a new backdrop. And I gotta say forever. If game ID equals two, then switch backdrop to backdrop to blue sky one. Else switch backdrop to blue sky two. Cool. Cool. Then we need to get this mechanism where if you press R, the game restarts and all is well. And for that, we're going to say if the R key is pressed, if R key is pressed, then we're going to say 
set the gamma to two, but that's not all. We want the score to reset too, and so and we want the lives to reset because if the lives doesn't reset, it'll always be zero, and it'll keep on broadcasting game over, and our game will, and our game will break. So effectively, what we want to do is set the game ID to two and set score to zero, and we want to set the lives to three. And after all of this, we want to wait until not our key press because we always don't want it to be setting the game ID to two or doing all this because we couldn't increase the score. So let's see if it works. The basketballs don't show up that often. Boom, now if we press R to restart, boom, it works. And I'll actually make this be bigger. Just for simplicity, it kind of looks better. So, yeah. It's the start of our project. Alright, that's it for this tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed. Uh, tune in next time where we'll be learning how to add a main menu and some other cool features as well. And uh, if this gets to 1k likes, I'll turn this into a series. So please get this uh, top liked. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next time, everybody. Goodbye.